Hello. In this episode, we'll um, discuss about how to use deep learning for time series forecasting, and we'll be using the multi-layer perceptron, i.e. the fully connected neural networks for multiple layers. Uh, and what we'll do is that uh, we'll show um, the, the, at each step, first load the data, and then split the training and test set, just like any other supervised learning, and then convert the time series to a data, which we saw in the previous episode, and then um, the real new thing, the set of the neural network, fit the model and how to evaluate. And we'll do this um, in um, an example program. So here is um, time series forecasting. Um, so how you get it is of course from Google Colab. Um, if you have the file, uh, you can click new or file upload and then find uh, where you want to have, uh, where you have saved your problem. So I clicked on it. And um, so here we'll be using um, NumPy pandas and, and for plotting the Seabone um, PyLab and the matplotlib, um, here's some of the new functions here from matplotlib we'll be using for to draw. And then we'll be using TensorFlow for um, the setting up the neural network. So. Um, and the lines here below are for um, making the plots. Um, these are some of the settings um, uh, that I'll be using. Okay, let's first, um, we'll be considering the um, retail sales, the monthly retail sales. So let's upload this file. Oh, and let's take a look at how this data looks like. So here's the date uh, since 92, every month um, it has it. And uh, the next column will be the retail sales, RS XFSN series. Uh, um, and it's a number like this. It's a fairly large number, isn't it? Um, okay. So we uploaded this data, let's read it in into Panda data frame. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna keep that column RSXFSN series. I'll just keep that column and I will rescale it to make it in a fraction because the numbers were kind of large. So I'll divide it by 10,000. Okay. Um, in time series, typically uh, what, um, what people like to use in a linear regression or in general is a stationary time series. Uh, an increasing for some time series is not really the one that we like to play. I will do in this episode, but typically we try to avoid it and try to um, detrend it and, and make it like uh, uh, moving around zero, isn't it? And, and just uh, make it a stationary time series. But here we'll just show um, how with a trend we do this. And um, since it's a supervised learning, we will um, um, have a train test and test set. Um, so we'll use 80% as the train and train and the rest being the test data. And how we do it is that um, we find in the DF, the data uh, from zero to n train minus one um, be the train data and from the n train to the end be the test data. Okay, so 288 train data and 72 test data is what we have. And here's the function that we um, had from the previous episode uh, that how to um, slice the time series to prepare for a neural network. Namely, if you have a single column of data, of time series data, then um, expand it into however many time steps you want um, and um, have the data in the X be unfolded into multiple columns. So that's the function. So here we consider having, let's say past 16 time steps, we will use to predict the next uh, month's uh, retail sales. Um, we just use a single time series, the feature is one. Uh, the many time series and neural network models um, um, do require three dimension. And, and that's, uh, well, the time step and the feature here, 
And then we have the sample, how many samples we have. So we have the three dimensions here. So uh, our, our function here basically converts it in that form. So get the time series for train and end step and test an end step. So that will prepare the time series into 272 rows, um, well, if you will, and the 16 time steps. And we have just one feature, meaning was the retail sales itself that we use. The Y is 272 by one column. Okay. The test data, you can do the same and you will have the um, 72 by 16 by one and 72 by one. So now comes the real thing, and it's fairly simple, surprisingly simple, and you can add more layers as you want. We call the sequential method because it's just a simple neural network structure. But here, model add dense and can have 50 nodes of, of, of fully connected nodes. If I want to, I could, I'm not going to, but have another, let's say, uh, 30 nodes added and, and keep doing it until, you know, what you have to be careful, of course, is that the first layer, you have to specify how many inputs you have, and we'll have 16, that number of end steps. And the very output will have uh, one, isn't it? We'll predict just one number, which is the next month's sales. Uh, we'll compile it with the mean square error criterion and Adam's optimizer. Okay. So now we need to uh, set up the um, neural network we'll basically have to fit it. Uh, we'll use the fit command and the train data is the X input variable. Y train is the output for the training. We'll have 500 epochs, 32 observations a batch at a time. Um, we'll have a validation sample of 10% and we'll show the middle steps. Let's, let's see. So um, it runs fairly fast, um, um, uh, running quite fast. Um, and um, uh, you can see here in the middle, it shows the um, intermediate losses. Um, since we have it saved in the history, we can plot it if you want to. Um, it's all stored in this history variable. Um, all the validation loss and the actual uh, training loss, we'll have it here. I think it's about to be done. Okay, okay so now that it's done, um, the next step is, so now all the weights are optimally weighted. Um, and you could look again, um, like the history and all this, but let's just move straight into the prediction. Um, with our model, which was named model, um, in the model, um, the predict command and put the X input, X test, which was not used in the training. So it's a completely new thing. And let's do a prediction, which we call Y predict. Let's see how this actual Y predict is, um, how it fares with the actual Y test which was a true realization in the economy. So the uh, one way to show it is to how to show it in the picture. So we'll um, have a plot of uh, the sequence of numbers here in the period uh, from zero to uh, whatever period we have. And we plot the white train, um, which was um, the um, training data used here. And then uh, we'll have from the next one, from starting the Y train plus one and up until the Y test um, plus. Um, so we'll plot the Y test and we plot the Y prediction. The Y prediction in a red color, Y test in a blue dots. Okay, so that's after retail sales. And what you can see here is that well, here was the training data, here was a blip. Uh, and and, and uh, here, um, the green line stops. This is up until where we use for the training data. And then the blue dot continues. And you can see that the blue dots and the rain line, red lines are fairly similar. If you actually expand it and just focus on this region here, what we can see here is that the, the blues are the actual sales. So on the normal times when it just exhibits seen seasonality, it fairly closely follows. Sometimes there are surprises. The dip is uh, much deeper than we expected then the red line doesn't predict as well and it suffers, but then it, it, it kind of uh, follows back again. Okay? So it turns out that the deep learning can do a reasonable job in tracking and uh, predicting um, the actual monthly sales. Okay? So thank you for watching this uh, video.